Welcome back to the last, final episode of Tying That Guy. I'm Wes Chatham. This is my good friend, Ty Frank. Also, my good friends, Dominique Tipper and Stephen Strait. Hi, and hi, hi. Hello. <laughs> I didn't realize this was the last one. Like, ever? We're never doing this again? Well, this is, I mean, when this airs, this will be the last one. Ever? <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Do you guys want to have a conversation? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I feel like you stuff. just fired me. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's like, all right. It's okay. Just it's make an exact decision. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's no more expanse just, to just, talk about just, after this. Just dropping the hammer. Yeah. Like, right off the top. Wow. I mean, this is the last one with us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking top. about today? Uh, well, I guess it would be 606, right? 606. Finale. Finale. And look, you know, one of, I want to start this off by talking about a conversation that Steven and I had. I think it was season three. And we were sitting. Why, we were in, where was I? Uh, uh, we were in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were probably in London Why town. Why wasn't I in this conversation? Um, but Steven and I were sitting down and we were talking. And we were talking about the things that were really important to us. That really, the, the things that we watched when we were growing up that really meant something to us. That had an impact. That just extremely important to our lives and we you know our only goal in getting into this is that one day we would hope to be a part of something like that that was important to people that we could share and now that you've seen this last season and you saw the last episode do you think we accomplished that i do i do i'm i'm so proud of it and you know i remember i remember that conversation really well and you know as an actor as a as an artist of any kind, you just you just want to be a part of something that feels important, and um, we did that. We did that. I, I remember too. I was like, "You're you welcome, know, buddy." Yeah. By the way, <laughs> yeah, thank you. By, yes, thank you. I mean, like you know, that was that was part of that conversation. It was like, "Well, we need to finish. Mm-hmm. We need to finish. We need to get the six. We need to finish." And um, and we did. You know, we have a complete story, beginning, middle, and end. It is so wild to think that we began this, uh, obviously a lot earlier for you, but the TV show in 2014, and it's 2021, and we we created this thing that is just like, I mean, it's kind of its own like thing now, especially after like it getting cancelled and the fans saving it, it just... Do you remember we always used to laugh and be like, when we were on sci-fi, be like, our tens and tens of fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we always felt like we were just making this thing for us and like nobody was watching it, which I don't really think many people were. And this is not to like, and we know we had diehard fans from the beginning. I'm not. I'm not taking that away. I mean, they're the reason that we stayed on. We used to go out tens, and I used to go hundreds, hundreds of fans. (laughs) We're in hundreds, goddammit. Well, I mean, what's funny about that, us being on, you know, Amazon for the last three years is we didn't get great numbers when we were broadcast, but we were always in the top 10 on every every place you could buy a show. So when the show was out, we, you know, we weren't doing great on sci-fi, but we'd be top 10 on Apple TV and, you know, top 10 on Amazon and like tons of people were buying the show and watching it. They just weren't watching it with commercials. Yeah. Right. So once we went over to Amazon, it's like, that's the natural fit now. This is where we were always supposed to be. Yes. My favorite thing is when we first started on Amazon that you'd run into people out of town, out in town, and they, there's a few people that came up and go, we love your new show. <laughs> <laughs> new show? We've been doing this for five years, almost six years. But I still remember when I first met you, Dominique, and I, we were at a fitting, and it was a day before we were going to shoot our very mm-hmm. first scene. And I remember just walking around, like this, this the incredible energy and confidence that you had. <laughs> and, and I was like, "Hi!" You're like, "Hi!" You know, tell me. You were a professional dancer, and you come from this background, mm-hmm. and this was your first like real big show and thing to be a part of. And you had so much command at such an early, I mean, at such an early time in your career. I just, I'm curious about, and I want to, you know, one of the things I want to talk to you is, I'm curious about your personal journey through The Expanse, but also mm. your character's journey. Mm. How is Naomi different from when she first started till now? And how is Dominique different? I mean, I am so different. I, I always feel like I um, grew up on The Expanse in, in terms of my acting career, because I was completely inexperienced. I'd done a few bit parts, one kind of lead role in an ensemble piece. And then I booked this and I was just like, shit. <laughs> 
<laughs> because I was surrounded by people who have been working their whole lives. You just come off something huge, sure. I was just like, I'm not sure I'm supposed to be here, but in true Dominique fashion, I was like, I'm going to give it my all. But I was crapping myself. I just like severe imposter syndrome. I just, I felt like I didn't know what I was doing, you know. And I just kind of didn't really understand why everybody had like taken this chance on me. <sighs> there was a lot of that. And um, I don't know. I just kind of threw myself into it as I do everything. And I have always in anything I've done pretty much learned on the job. Like even with dancing, I never went to dance in school. I went to a version of acting school, but it was like evening classes. So I've always kind of like thrown myself in the deep end and swam out. And um the expanse was no different. And I just, I learned so much. I learned a lot by fire, I think. You know, there's a lot of stuff. I didn't really know how to conduct myself on a set or the etiquettes, how to speak to actors, how to speak to kind of anyone in terms of like, dancing was a whole different kettle of fish. And I, I danced with my best friends for 12 years. So there was a shorthand and a language that we could use. There was a bluntness I could have that was comfortable that, when I got into this space, I was a bit like... <laughs> <laughs> I, we, ne we never noticed that. Like, you know, the, the kind of the confidence that you projected and then you walked in the room and... and, and I could just, you yeah. know, I'm like an energy sponge yeah. anyway. So I just think I was bombarded with like all these kind of people and situations. That I was just like, Ugh. but, um, you know, in saying that, what I didn't know at that time is like the team that we have, I, I mean, to get to where I've got to now and be so cushioned, like by you guys, by Narain is like the best fucking showrunner. I mean, he's okay. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> but there was a kindness and a support and a fairness. Like I was allowed to make mistakes. They didn't mean I was kind of left out the conversations going forward. And Narain was always so fair with me. I mean, we had our ups and downs, like we all did making this show, but honestly, I'm just like so grateful that I got to kind of chisel my, my craft in this environment because it was like doing it wrapped in cotton wool. I think now I know the industry more and I'm like, there is not many shows that operate this way or have a rehearsal every Sunday or, you know, I walk in and Stephen was the way he was in the chemistry read. Like he was so kind. I remember him being like, you got this. And I was just like, I ain't got nothing, but I appreciate this. You know, it's just all like love basically. And for all the ups and downs we've had, I, I just now at this point, I'm like, shit, there is nothing more special than this experience I've had. So I was a producer on the show last year, you know, it's a whole dip. I've gone from being like what I would say, was a novice what a journey to, you know like you know, what you've learned yeah. and, how and you i know go. so much now about the way it all works uh who i want to be in the mix of that and who i am as a woman on a set who i am as a black woman on a set what i can contribute who i am as an actress like season five was the most challenging thing i've ever done in my life i didn't know i had the stamina to do those episodes in the way that i did um and maintain it and be proud of it afterwards so it's just like i'm a completely different person and I think Naomi is too. Yeah, tell us a little bit. In a that. different way, you know. Um, we was talking about this yesterday when we done press, and I was just like, you know, there's a, I, I don't know if you find this, but there's a point with your character. I, I mean, it's probably different for Amos, but I was really on the same page with her for a long time. And then it, she made some choices that I was just like, ooh, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, going into that space as an actor and being like it, it come, has to come from a place of empathy and you relate in the ways that you can and try and understand why your character's making the decisions that they are that journey has been now we're on season six has been more of the journey than when i was kind of aligned with her i feel and so i don't know i i um got to develop a very different part of myself through her decisions and choices that I am just like, I would never have, have done those things or had that courage or had that conviction in that choice that I made or left my son for that. I don't know if I would have had the strength to walk away from that, to preserve myself. Like these things that I'm just like, probably would have been a bit judgy about, like, especially in terms of her, the way that she's conducted her motherhood in the way that she had to. I think I maybe would have had different opinion about that than 
I do now. So there's so many things that I'm just like, wow, especially getting to season five, what this woman went through and her kind of like, if there's not giving up and then there's Naomi. <laughs> And I just, through pushing through as an actress, through what we did in season five and what she went through in season five was just like, I don't even, I don't think I can quite quantify the effect it's had on me or what that means about her, but it just feels huge. And I love where she gets to by the Mm. end of episode six with Holden and just her place in the world and the choices she's had to make and why. I'm just, I'm very proud of her. I am. It's a messy journey. Mm-hmm. Well, Daniel always describes uh, Naomi as uh, the animal that got caught in a trap and had to chew off one of its legs to get mm. away. And uh, you get away and you bear the scars of that for the rest mm-hmm. of your life. Um, you're never the same. Mm-hmm. But she got away and she has a life after that. And she uh, you know, has a, a much more complete life, I think, once yeah. she gets away. But the scar of that, that encounter, the scar of getting out of that trap, That'll always be there. It's never, it's never but, going away. And then the courage and perseverance it takes to create a life beyond that kind of trauma. Yeah. Not everybody succeeds in that. And, you know, it's where some people, addictions are born from or just deep heartbreak. You know, that, that saying that people die from heartbreak is not a joke. It's true. So it's like how when you're in such grief and have experienced such trauma do you carry on and make a life that you're proud yeah. of and happy it it takes some of us years to get to that point after trauma so that is the thing that i just admire about her so much is to be so settled in who she is and what she's done and why she done it that she can carry on with her head held high and i think yes she will always have scars and probably feel lots of regret and doubt at moments but overall she pushes through and i just i think that's amazing amazing trait to have and portray a character that has that trait. Stephen, what about you? I mean, you know, I mean, this has been almost eight years now. And I think that in some ways, your leadership role on the show kind of mimics your leadership role on the on the as Captain Holden uh, in the thing. And so from from a personal level and from your character's perspective, how have you grown and changed throughout the experience? Uh, you know, okay. Kind of like what Tom was saying. I mean, the the journey was so vast for Holden um, and for me too. You know, I learned I learned so much these last seven years. Um, but for Holden, you know, I uh, I had an overarching goal from the beginning because I was the hope was always that we would be able to get to the end, and there was a chance to. To, sh- to show a really um, well-plotted and meticulous arc of the natural evolution, a realistic evolution of a leader and this kind of messy um, strength through hum- humility that Holden has. And he kind of, I love, I, and I loved it from the books, is that he, you know, he learns through his, his failures and he learns through his mistakes and his stumbles and um you know it's not something that's just innately in there that like you often see in in hero journeys where there's they're just that guy from the beginning it's Mm. like holden has a moral and ethical core that's always there and then he builds on that um through these very very difficult circumstances and you know what was amazing was to be able to show his growth and a very different kind of masculinity that's based and centered around empathy and centered um, around sensitivity and a, and, a, and a guy who brings people together. Um, and then, you know, it culminates in, in the end of, of six with, you know, this very different kind of courage. You know, he knows, he knows who he is. He knows his limitations. He, um, he does the right thing by stepping away and not taking charge and um i just i i've always loved that about holden because it was just a, an amazing opportunity to just show um a really unique kind of figure that just isn't often seen in science fiction or in, in adventure stuff or whatever or just in terms of character development it's just 
um, in, in doing this over 20 years. I, I can't remember a, a version of that that I had read before, you know. Um, and it was a, a really cool opportunity for me as an actor because it's a very messy path. Um, Holden has a lot of really hard hard moments it's not easy for him and it's um he's a worrier and he <laughs> like and he you know by the end it's like I, before we started the sixth season like i i dropped a bunch of weight to make him kind of look stressed and gaunt and uh, i wanted him to feel like every one of these circumstances and moments over the last six seasons has just weighed terribly on this man mm-hmm. um and ironically kind of by accepting his his own limitations and um and finding you know it's, it's that thing where like life just burns away the bullshit and you're just left with what you are mm-hmm. and um he knows who he is and he's ironically capable of, of of delivering on what the system needs him to be because of the love of his his family and uh you know that for me, that's what the sixth season really represents is just amazing meditation on family and how, um, and how that reflects in each person and, and even in the macro sense uh, in the story. So um, it was amazing. I mean, like I, it's, the, it's, been the, it's been the greatest joy of my professional life to be able to show this, um, this completion of this arc. And then, you know, personally, I, um, I just... I'm so grateful that I was trusted in a, in, in a, in a, in a place of leadership. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I just loved this story and I just wanted it to be the best it could be. And, and whatever I could do to help um, make that a reality, I wanted to be able to do. You know, I, when we started, I was, I was 28, but um, I, I had worked since I was a teenager. And uh, I grew up on big sets and I, um, you know, I, I just wanted to throw my, my hand in because I, I, I always felt the possibility was there for something great. And I just wanted to be able to facilitate that, however, that whatever that meant. Um, so I did, you know, and, um, you know, whether whether it was, you know, rehearsing or, or you know, um, kind of lending my opinion or a hand or whatever. Um, you know, it takes a village to make this stuff. And I, I just wanted to help. So, you know, as, as that, as that kind of grew over the years, I, I, I learned that I really loved that. And, um, and my, uh, pride in being able to, you know, contribute to, to that kind of culture really changed me. I mean, like, I, I didn't really know I had that. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes me like fucking emotional to even talk about. But, <laughs> That's um, what we want, man. It's the last yeah. one. We want to feel it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's that uh, yeah, was really cool. We um we get asked a lot, you know, Noreen and Daniel and I. We get asked a lot, you know, who's your favorite character to write for? And you know, it's usually whichever one I'm writing for right now. But uh, the yesterday somebody asked who's the hardest character to write for, and we all agreed by far the hardest character to write for is Holden. Mm-hmm. Because Holden's arc is so long, and it and it's so gradual to get him from where he starts to where he ends up, and uh, you understood that right from the beginning, and didn't try to force it to be something it wasn't ready to be yet, and let it slowly happen. And on top of that, Holden is a very non traditional hero because the the American ideal Western hero is the lone gunman who rides into town, shoots all the bad guys, and and rides off. And Holden's not that guy. Holden wins by building consensus. He builds. He wins by building communities. He wins by uh, having opportunities to take power and then choosing not to, right. and letting somebody else take mm-hmm. power. And that's very much not sort of the American hero idea. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you have to you have to like tease the audience over there. You have to pull them with you because if you start with that, nobody gets it. So you got to kind of allow, as Holden develops into what he is, we're also kind of developing the audience mm-hmm. to understand right. that kind of hero so that they can, you know, wind up in the same place he's at at the end. Because the apex of that is the decision he makes in the last episode That's right. to step down and give that power to Drummer because he knows that is the only way to maintain That's balance. That's right. And which, by the way, the most Holden decision in six seasons mm-hmm. is right. that one. Yeah. Where they're like, you can be king of the world. And he's like, or 
Drummer could. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I could just go back on my ship. Yeah. yeah. I, but, rem- I remember Daniel saying to me, um, he had this great line that just kind of summed it up for me in such a beautiful way. He was like, Holden starts the series rejecting a job out of immaturity and ends the series rejecting it out of maturity. Wow. Yeah. Another decision that I want to know when you first read it as an actor, yeah. when Holden decided to discharge the bomb. Mm-hmm. Because as a, as a viewer and as a fan, that, that really got me. <laughs> what was your thought process when you read that as an actor? Like, you know, I, I, was, I was looking forward to it because I knew it was going to be really challenging. Mm-hmm. It, was a very, it was a very tricky beat. Um, and I knew that, <laughs> that when it happened, um, you know, and it's that, it's that, that's that thing that we do when you're an actor where it's like you just got to you know that someone's going to be throwing their remote at the television. <laughs> like, oh, I was like, God damn it, hold on, shit. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it, it was exciting to me because um, it is a very holding decision. And, like, I, you know, we're talking about, like, how your values kind of diverge from, mm-hmm. from the characters. And, you know, I don't know if mine would, actually. Mm-hmm. And in that way, I've actually, I've, over the years, is. There's been very few, if any, moments where Holden has made decisions where I go, I don't understand it. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I get it. Like, mm-hmm. I, I think um, in that way, me and Holden are, are, are similar in, in a lot of our values. Um, I mean, you and I have had a couple of conversations where you asked me to explain something. Yes, right. Yeah, where you'd yeah. say, why, why is he going here? Why, why yeah. is he saying this or making this choice? And after those conversations, every time you would go, oh, I get it now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For sure. I'm, I'm on board. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, finding those justifications to be able to kind of go like, what was what was your intention with yeah. with making this in the, in the overall story structure, yeah. so that I'm playing it right? But you know, for for that moment, he just can't. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It also feels like to me the first time in the show where humans actually learn from their mistakes of the past. Yeah. And a correction is made that has like historically never really happened where like the big, the colonizers go, do you know what? You should have rule over your land, you know? And I think Holden making that choice is like, it's so satisfying for me as a person of color, I'm watching it like, well, this has like hardly ever happened in history. And it is the right way to do things. It's right that everybody has a piece of the pie and it is more likely to create a a solar system that everyone can live in and function in harmoniously, but we never do that. So for me, it's just like, it is so wild that it happens because we're so used to the Mm -hmm. opposite, (laughs) you know, but in what you're saying about, I could imagine Stephen doing that as well. Actually. Yeah, yeah. You know? And that led to a great moment with Naomi when he comes and tells you, and you're like, hold on, motherfucker. You don't make decisions for me. <laughs> when no, he, uh, yeah, when, yeah. When, he, when he disowned the torpedo yeah. and he came, he's like, oh, by the way, I didn't, you know, and he made that big decision. Do you know what? I also love that moment because it's so, like, her reaction to it is so, like, what you would not expect. Yeah. yeah. Is her going, no, no, no. We have to kill him yeah, in, in a yeah, way, yeah. Yeah. and because I am understanding the the solar system wide ramifications, and I can't live with that guilt actually. Yeah. So you are coming to me with this guilt, and I'm like, well, what about the guilt of the billions? And what what was communicated? Like when I saw that scene, what I saw is Naomi has done the hard work. Yes. Yeah. she has made the conclusion. She's she already mourned him. Yeah, she's, she's mourned the Philip. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she's yep. mourned it. She's there. So when he comes and says this, she's like, listen. I think it's a coming to terms because I. I don't think she's entirely done the work, actually. I think she's in the process of it. Because someone asked me this yesterday, like, is this Naomi healing? And I was like, I think she's on her way. I think it's clear in the series that she's not okay. But at that point, with being that book being brought to her, she's like, no, no, no. You know, sometimes when like you haven't fully thought through a thing and then someone comes to you and you have to mm-hmm. act and in actual fact, it solidifies what you're feeling. Mm-hmm. That's what I think that moment is for her and for how she, again, I feel like Naomi's very good at teaching people how to treat her Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. and articulating why she wants to be treated that way and the work that she's done to get to this point and this is why you need to treat me that way. So for me, it's like peak Naomi, but it's also spurs on the rest of her healing because she is confirming out loud what she is coming to terms with internally. Mm -hmm. The work that we, we don't see, we don't know she's doing as an audience she then uh, voices it. And I think that 
leads to the you know the decision she makes to press that button which is just like which is not without cost yeah absolutely no, not it's but not she's without willing cost, to take but the she cost. takes but she takes it yeah and, and move forward and you'll yeah. have that powerful scene where where holden is holding you mm. and yeah. you're and you're really it's beautifully that. edited oh. It is. Um, yeah. yeah, the Narain working with the editors, that whole sequence is cut together. Yeah, because we had a it's, lot of convos about that. Yeah. And, and there was a moment so where bad, I was yeah. like, I don't think she should be in his arms. Why is she running to him after she's done that? Like, I want her on her own. And we even, you was yeah. even like, yeah, I think she should be on yeah. her own. Yeah. And Breck was just like, you know, our, our normal creative back and forth that we yeah. have with him. He was like, you need to do this scene. I think it's going to be lovely. And I was just like, well, the way it's shot, you you look like you're trying to get away. And he's oh, that's yeah. the, that's hanging the, on. I mean, we talked yeah. about this yeah. so much. And I think it's the only way we felt it yeah. was comfortable. Like, it, it works. But the bit before was something I kind of just improvised a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> the right. scream that wasn't really on the page oh yeah it's how i felt in the moment so we just i'm glad they're both in there actually yeah because i think it really tells the story of the mm. moment i i will say that so holden's decision with the bomb that moment spurs a bunch of the uh, yeah. Yeah. reflection everybody yeah. introspection mm -hmm. um so I, it's a nice triggering moment i was so i i it was it was the it was the moment i i prepared for the most this year like i i knew it was coming you know what what i found so lovely about it too is like and it, it was such a mature moment for holden is when he he comes to naomi and and he's like no i'm i'm not necess i'm not doing it for anyone i just can't be the, the man for this moment for that i just right. can't i'm not that guy yeah. i just can't do it i yeah. can't do it i can't i just can't do it yeah and um you know when i read it you know part of me goes i'd like to think i would think of the bigger picture and do right. the right and then i go of course i couldn't yeah. Of course I couldn't. <laughs> right. Like, of course I couldn't. Right. Like, when, you know, you see the love of your life's child and, you, and you're going to murder him for whatever, whatever the justification all the way around. I just But also can't. in a split second. Yeah, right. You just because, can't. you know, even if, you know, maybe he had time or whatever, he could come to a different, but the yeah. split second yeah. is like, you know, when you're in that emotional reflexive place. You're not, yeah, you're you just not can't, make that choice. You just can't. And I, I, I love that. Like, yeah. once again, it's so different for, yeah. like, when do you ever see that in the hero <laughs> yeah. journey? You know, yeah. like, it, it, it's, a, it's a very um, modern and sort of even specifically American thing that heroes don't make that choice. Right. Yeah. That yeah. when the hero's confronted with evil, he kills it with a gun, and right. that's how he defeats evil. Right. Um, so we're, we're very trained not to expect those choices. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a little disorienting yeah. when it happens. I think like, that's yeah. why everyone's so furious about it, because I'm sitting there like, yeah, of course. <laughs> Can't kill us, son. <laughs> What's wrong with everyone? I, I was not one of those guys. I was. I yeah. was like, oh, thank God. You know, like because I'm like, yeah, little more compassion, you know. But I want to focus on this moment before, like that, the, when when you actually pull the trigger and then he's holding and you have a thing, because it is it is a great example of actors making choices. You know, when you see this, is you know, it's a second on the screen mm -hmm. and it's so powerful and it wraps up. Your so your whole journey, man, yeah. was so journey, and then and then the culmination of you know when we first meet her wrestling with this guilt of leaving her son, and then Marco and her struggle with yeah. Marco, and then coming to this thing, and then you you're having this talk with the director, and, and this you know one of the great things about these fans is how collaborative and a creative mm -hmm. way it is. But you're making the choice. You're like, no, I think that she should be you know alone, and that would be another image. And Breck is saying this thing, but it ends up holding, going to you and knowing that you need this and you're rejecting it. Mm -hmm. And it's such a powerful, moving thing that comes with this kind of, col this, yeah. you know, collaborative, creative talk. And, and that's it. how it works. In the, in I the was scene. actually talking to Noreen about this. I said, because I think sometimes with the creative process, there's a bit of a shying away from conflict or at least uh, the conversation of um, and the debate about what a beat should be or what a thing should look like. And sometimes that gets shut down, especially in this industry by ego. And it's such a shame, like somebody just wielding their power to be like, I want it this way and this is how it's gonna be. And what I love about this show is we've never shied away from that. And I'm like, the amount of emails or conversations or debates we've had as a team, as a, between actors or Things I've said to Narena that's gone, I don't think it should be this way. Here's why it should be this way. Well, I get that. You know, that has led 
to some of the best choices, some of the scenes, some of the beats being the best they will ever be because we never, we, we manage to drop ego, not always, but most of the time drop ego and do that back and forth, that debate to craft that these moments. And um, that's a thing that I'm like so grateful for from this show because that has taught me that that, is often beneficial to the process and needs to happen. And there's so many things in this season, in seasons before that I'm like, I remember, I don't like to call it an argument, but debating with so-and-so yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think that was the right yeah. choice. And now it's gorgeous. Right. It's like uh, the end section of uh, season five. Like when Breck told me he was gonna shoot in the side of my helmet, yeah. that whole end section, I was like, are you serious? Because <laughs> I was like, I don't think that's gonna work. What is the side of my face gonna do? Yeah. And watching it back, I yeah. messaged him and was like, that is one of the most moving sequences. Like, yeah. forget that I'm in it. It's uh, gorgeous. Just, just, we don't compliment Breck on this show. No, we... we, 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 we an I'm unnamed, breaking the tradition. <laughs> an unnamed director made a good choice. <laughs> an unnamed made an director. excellent choice. Yeah. And I just, again, I'm like, that's why I fucking love this show. Yeah. Because we, we allow that process to happen. And we drop ego as best as we all can because we're still human. And we, you know, best idea wins. It's but, always... But you always struck me as so conflict averse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so shocked to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, at the end of that debate, or the, these conversations and these rehearsals that we do on Sunday, no matter what the outcome is of that debate, I always feel 100% more confident about the choice that's there because of the talk and the, you know, the thing, these stories, they have to be lived in. Their choices have to be lived in. If you're making these uh, massive, like if you're making this choice that you're, you, with you're disarming the new, you can end the whole thing right now. Right. You need to really do the work as an actor because it's so it's so easy for somebody not to believe it. If it's not coming from an authentic, honest place, yeah. then you're not gonna. Th nobody's gonna believe it. And then that is when people are throwing remote controls. Or, yeah, yeah you, know. And, you know, and that's I. It's on on the performance side. It's the it's the thing I love most about this show is that it's just no false beats. Yeah, it's like it is. I just believe it. I right. believe it when people make those decisions. And we've lived in these these stories for so long that every once in a while, you know, these spur of the moment things happen. I remember that shooting six and I was in the chair next to Tom. She was shooting the moment that she presses the button. And I was just, you know, there as, I wasn't on in shot, I was there for eyeline if she needed it. And we roll. And she presses the button and she screams, which was not planned. And I go, holy fuck. I, I didn't even want to move because I like, I didn't want to break her. Like I didn't want it to be distracting. And I started crying, like just hearing it. Uh -huh. Like, and it's just these like, inc this, those moments don't fucking happen on television. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like it was just, it was so, it was so moving. And it's, I think it's just a testament to like how, um, how invested, you know, you are Naomi, and how invested we all are in these in these characters after so many years. Mm -hmm. It's like so much love went into this. Yeah, um, to understand all these people. I think for me, on a personal level, like if I sit back and think of the show, and I try to boil it down to what the message is of the show, what I hope people seem to get, and this is me personally, and this, you know, everybody's gonna have a different thing, but. There is, there really is, like, evil does not exist. Good doesn't exist. There's always a little bit in the middle. There's always the gray area. It works. To, and, but I think ultimately the spirit of humanity and the good in humanity, even if it's sometimes just edging it out, it always, it, it seems to kind of come through at the end. And for me, like, the message of The Expanse is hope. I feel it, you know, and, and particularly in this last episode, season six. And it launches me in a place where I have so much gratitude um, for this show. I have such gratitude for you guys and, and what we've all been through together and what we've grown in, in this thing that we had to create. And, and then being a part of this universe, and it, to me it's so beautiful in these characters and it's so honest and so much work went into it. But when it, when it ended, I felt that hope. I felt that hope that radiates throughout the show and throughout everything and, that, and, it, and it made me feel that. And so, you know, what, what do you guys, if you had to boil it down, like what the show meant to you and, and what you would hope 
that it would communicate to others. Do you I to... mean, I, I feel the same, you know, I think, I think it's just, it's such a beautiful display of differences. Like humans are different. We all have different thoughts, feelings, political leanings. And I do think um, something about season six that strikes me is this like, all the different pieces of the pies coming together, doing their little bit to create this last hopeful moment. It, it wasn't, although it's uh, Holden making a decision, there's so many things that happen throughout that season for us to be able to get to that point of hope. And so um, ex like extending on what you've just said, because I'm also, I feel exactly the same. There's also that thing of just knowing that like everyone does their part to get to that point. And it's not necessarily the good guys or the bad guys. It's like everyone, you know, you you think of that that final scene around the table with Holden and Drama and um, Avasarala. And these are all different people who have been around the solar system and back. And then we end with that point of hope, like we got to the right place in the end. And it still took all those people that we could say were good at one point, were bad at one point, done awful things at one point, done great things. and. This is the message that it tells me about humanity is, as I agree with you, I, I think right and wrong is like a thing we created to try and justify our every day. And I, I don't think it exists. I think it's actions and it's about intuition and gut and following that unapologetically towards the right thing. And I think that's what the end of The Expanse is. It's like he made a choice that was put together by so many of these pieces that led to, to the hopeful moment, but it came from, from here, you know? And I said that to you yesterday, like it's rare to have a hero that follows his intuition, especially a masculine presenting one, so unapologetically. And that's actually what Holden is. He always follows his gut and he doesn't care what everybody else thinks about it. So clearly. <laughs> so I think that's partly what makes him so infuriating, but I do understand that when no one understands the choices you're making, but you know it's the right thing. And I think we just get to this beautiful kind of middle ground of that, whatever that is, um, with everyone contributing to it. And so, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense, but kind of that's what I want people to take away from it. You're actually articulating the theme that was deliberately written in, which is that um, the problem isn't solved by a lone hero making a choice for everyone. The problem is solved when thousands of people make just a slightly better choice than mm -hmm. they would have normally made. And that's why we pepper in all season long. You know, you have Anna talking about the relief efforts on the news. You have Monica filming people and getting them to tell their story mm -hmm. about what the war is doing to them. Uh, you have Prax reaching out to mm -hmm. Amos and saying, here's a thing that might help feed some people. It's And none of those are big hero moments. None of those people mm -hmm. by themselves solve the problem, but all of it together leads up to that exactly. moment where it can kind of be better because everybody helped a little bit. Everybody just pushed the ball just a little bit further. That is what we were trying to do this season. So you're basically articulating it's, it exactly does. what the intention it, was. It does that. And it's, it's something we all, I think we roll our eyes at a lot in real life to be like, oh, if I do this, that's going to help. Right. You know, it's hard to believe that that's possible. And I think this is illustrated in such a like non-fluffy kind of realistic kind of gritty way that it's possible but it's not in the kind of i think we always associate that line of thinking with like really kind of liberal schmibral like everybody contributes and it goes to the whole and it's like this kind of and i'm like no it's hard and it's dirty and people are dying and people are crying and losing loved ones and some people are not some people are sending you these great things as how to create more food on earth and it's you know not um, to kill your kid <laughs> some some of the sacrifices bigger than other it all contributes to this moment and everybody played a, their part in yep. it um and again followed went towards what they felt was the right thing and that is so hopeful for me even the antagonist you know the it, marco naris clearly the antagonist clearly not a good person not a nice person the thing that he did is he forced the oppressors to recognize the plight of the oppressed and he did it in all the wrong ways and he and he caused a bunch of terrible things but the end couldn't have happened without it absolutely and my one of my favorite lines in the series is when Avasarala is talking to drummer and Avar i can't remember what Avasarala says you could probably say that but drummer says 
um, a Marco was inevitable yeah. for the years mm. of opp- centuries of oppression yep. that Earth has created for Belters or yeah. something to that. And I was like, this is the thing. There's no linear right, wrong. You could say Marco is bad. I don't think he's a very nice person, but what he was doing was not necessarily from a bad place it's born out of something and i love that line so much because i think there isn't a a truer line in the series of what he is about how he even come to be what he is so again it's just so expansive it's fabulous this this exploration of humanity in that way so you know this is this is the we're talking about the last episode you know and i think We've been together for seven years now and we've been doing this and uh, have you guys, you know, we, we've had a lot of last. We had the last script. We had the last day on set. This is, you know, one of our last pl- press obligations. Have you guys processed it yet? And and what has that been like? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I processed leaving production and for whatever reason that has not connected with the processing of the show being finished <laughs> um but no it hasn't hit me yet like i uh yeah i don't know when it will but it it's, but it hasn't because i feel um we've been doing this for so long now we go to toronto we shoot this thing and, and we've been t- glowing about what this creative process and how important it's been to us and our growth personally and our growth as a character we go to toronto we do our thing we come back we do post-production we do press we go back to toronto so in my body, you know, I, I feel like it's just part of the, the routine, the schedule, like we're going to go back, you know, and but consciously, I haven't really processed it yeah. yet. You know, I, and so it's it's, you know, I'm always very slow to process. <laughs> Dominique is quick. <laughs> to process. I was about to say, I think I've yeah. processed it. She's already mourned and moved on. <laughs> I mean, I literally I'm saying this. I felt like I was at like nine funerals the yeah. last week of production. I was literally at everyone's rap blubbing. Yeah. I couldn't even get through the speech that I'd done on my rap. Like I found it so like just knowing that was ending, I think I definitely processed it then. But I do think I'll have a little further processing to do when the last episode is. Yeah. I think that's gonna be like, okay, that's it. That's okay. the last vestige of processing because you know, we still, we're still gonna air, we're still gonna talk about it. But sure. once that last thing's I over. I think that'll be it for me yeah. when I'll just have another final little cry. Yeah. And, um, and I could imagine for you because you, yeah. I mean, this has been seven years for us. This has been what? I, I move on quickly. Oh, okay. I'm already working on the next thing. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you guys. This has been one of the great experiences Same. of my career. Oh, I love you, brother. Uh, you're, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, this has been one of the joys of my career, my life, and this has been just such an honor to work with you guys. And, uh, that's all I got to say about that. Likewise, Same. man. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. Um, say goodbye, Ty. Goodbye, Ty. <laughs>